Well, greetings. It's the weekend and this is your update and we're in the final days of August. I can't believe we've been in school already a week and a half. I always think of school not starting until September, but things are different here in Colorado than they were in Massachusetts, and marching band is going on, football is going on, and for those of you who've been asking if you're late in getting your instrument, you're pretty close to it. We're starting to run out of some stuff. we got more things coming in, so call the store if you got any questions about that. But one of the things that we're not out of is the pencil holder. This is something that when we were doing inventory back in December, I was reacquainted with and realized that we should tell more people about it, and and uh, back when I was in school, Mr. Lasdow, my uh, band director, always called it our professional pencil and uh, made sure that we always had it. Well, with one of these, you always will. Check out this short that I made. What the heck is it? A pencil holder. Clips onto your pencil like that, clamps onto your trumpet like that, or your horn, or even your trombone. Get yours at Boomer Music Company. Super simple item, uh, it keeps the pencil right at hand, very cool, very cheap, uh, come on in and grab one. Then over on the Drums West Instagram page, again I'm trying to explore deeper into what Peter's had going on over there, and he did a one-handed timbal rhythm. Unfortunately I don't have the video clip for that, but if you want to follow that QR code that'll take you to it. Uh, super cool stuff, very very useful, if you know Peter you know he knows his stuff. And uh, check that out, if you got any questions about anything that you see over there on uh, the, the Drums West YouTube channel channel or on the Drums West Instagram page, drop us a line. Peter would be happy to I help you out with that, but check it out. One-handed Tim Bow, very, very cool. Then over on uh, Maple Leaf Strings, they're friends of ours that make string instruments, uh, they do their orchestral minutes, and this time they were talking about uh, graduation patterns. This has to do with the tops and backs of string instruments and the uh, various thicknesses of it and how that affects the quality of the instrument. Check out that short. Uh, you're going to learn some stuff because I know I sure did. Tune in! It's an orchestral minute! This is the inside of a Maple Leaf Strings violin. As exterior aesthetics advance, you can assume the interior construction does too. Graduation patterns are the range of thickness of the top and the back of an instrument, and they're what really shape the sound. Typically, the thinnest areas of an instrument will be in these four areas, and the thickest will be in the middle. We find that the thinnest areas are only 2.8 millimeters thick. That's almost three credit cards thick. And the thickest area is 3.7 millimeters. That's just under four credit cards. So how do you know if an instrument is actually worth more? Because it's aesthetic quality and tonal characteristics. As exterior aesthetics advance, you can assume the interior construction does too. The graduation pattern is what gives it the sound and playability that people fall in love with. So next time you burn a hole in your gift card, don't throw it away. Bring it into your customers to demonstrate how thin violins are. And that's an orchestral minute. So in researching this a little bit further for my own edification, I uh, discovered that different manufacturers have different thicknesses for the different parts of the instrument. So that's what gives, you know, a, a Stradivari or an Amati a different tonal quality than a Guarneri or something like that. So really fascinating stuff. That's a great introduction into it, but uh, dive deeper into it. Uh, it's some really cool stuff. We need to uh, delve more into it and uh, find out more about it. Then over on the Podcasting Store Medium page, this week I wrote an essay that was inspired by two things. Uh, one was a conversation that I had with one of our uh, band directors talking about different careers in music. Uh, she actually had me talking to her class uh, about you know, non-performing stuff, you know, very, very briefly, and I mentioned a few things that I did, but also a book that I was reading with Sam, my youngest, called The Badlands of Hark. It's by R.L. Stein. Uh, yes, that R.L. Stein. And it's a choose-your-own-adventure style book. And uh, it just got me reflecting on all the different choices that I've made for, uh, you know, professional stuff, jobs that I've done, places that I've been, things that I've done, and how each one has led to the next one. And with each new choice, it opens up different ones, but closes off others. But, and I will spoil the ending on this one. Unlike the Badlands of Hark, which has only one path to victory, there are many paths to victory here with having a career in music as a non-performing musician, as someone that isn't making their living on stage. Uh, so check out the essay. It'll give you some insights into some stuff that I've done. And frankly, if you're looking at non-performing careers in music, I would love to talk to you about it if you've got questions. So uh, check that out. It's a good read. That is your weekend update. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe. We will catch up with you next time. If you enjoyed the weekend update, do me a favor and follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channels, or visit our websites. This is Drew with Boomer Music Company and thepodcastingstore.com. Thanks for listening.